Greetings, my fellow dwarves. Radamon here. Thank you for tuning in to Dwarf Fortress Taming the Wilds, Episode 2, Sand and Seeds. So all the dwarves are taking a break. They're just drinking. Uh, and drinking pretty much exclusively booze. So you can see the drinks that we have just went from 60 uh, as a guesstimate to 50. Uh, which is a good reminder, Joe. Cheers. All right, here we go. So we have the workshops getting set up. Uh, I do have, because I've employed my expedition leader as a manager, I have the ability to set work orders. So here's what a work order is. You can set up, like, let's say we wanted to make uh, tables. So right now I'm setting up work orders for the stone worker. So let's do table. And we can make rock tables out of any of the rock that we have. Now, what's important to do here is instead of queuing it up one at a time, like, oh, make one table and then two tables. I mean, that's that's horrible and that's cumbersome. Go into the work orders and just go, hey, um, make a rock table. Uh, I would prefer if you used shale for the rock table. So make a shale table and do until you have five. And then if you go over to the conditions here, this is the conditions button. Oh, can I unlock the intercam? That I can. Sorry about that. If you go over to the conditions over here, we can say, hey, anytime that the amount of tables that we have available is less than five, and it, we have at least 10 shale, make some more tables. So it's a continuous bill that will always be fulfilled. And I just like specifying the, the stone so that um, it's not using any important stone accidentally. Uh, it does... And let's set up another one for thrones. Throne is just what a rock chair is called. So here's a rock throne. Make out of shale. Make five. And then we, when we have less than five, make more. And then only when we have greater than ten shale. Um, there's a lot of other bills to set up initially as well. So there is meals. We'll get to that eventually. Uh, the carpenter is almost done. There it is. So let's set up beds too. Make bed. Make beds. Uh, I'm going to want up to 10 beds. Uh, but I want to specify the material and it's going to be pine. Pine beds. Unlike uh, the thrones, you won't see the beds specifying the material. Although it is defined. I have defined it as pine. So we're going to be making pine beds and stone where um, the tables and thrones. And then the other thing that I want to make for the tables and thrones is let me get rid of this alert doors. Make a rock door. Again, uh, you guessed it. I'm going to go up to 10. We're going to say make this out of shale. So we'll have shale doors, shale thrones, which are chairs, uh, shale tables. Uh, beds. Then over on the carpenters, another really important thing to do early on is wood bear uh, barrel. For us to be able to brew our beer or alcohol, uh, we need to be able to brew it into something. Later on, I'll try to use as many rock jugs, which serve more or less the same purpose, but because wood is kind of abundant and I don't have elves going, don't cut the trees. Uh, I'll just make a bunch of wood barrels. So I'm going to add when barrels are less than 10 and logs are greater than 10, make barrels. And I'm not going to specify the material because I don't really care. Because barrels aren't a permanent structure of a, of a room, whereas a table or a chair is. A barrel will get moved around, it will get emptied, it will get carried around, it will get drank out of or hauled to the trade zones. Uh, the other thing I'm going to do is once they're done with the dining rooms... Uh, yeah, once they're done with the dining rooms, I'm going to want to dig out the trade area that I've designated. So, the first trade that comes won't require wagons, but the trades thereafter will. And now we have space for a still. Make that a shale. So, a still brews alcohol. 
And then we have a fishery, processing fish, and a kitchen cooking meals. And you can see how inexpensive it is to build these workstations. It's just like one stone. And um, as long as we have a manager, the work orders will get reassessed daily and uh, and issued to the workstations. So here you can say the barrel and the bed. And then this area, this check is that it is assigned and currently active. Basically, someone is currently working on it. So in the kitchen, I can just do make easy meals. And the only thing I want to check is to make sure that they're not cooking something dumb. So for instance, plump helmets, which is a mushroom, can be brewed, so don't use them. Turnip plants can be brewed, so don't use them. Uh, don't brew seed or don't cook with seeds, don't cook with drinks. And as you unlock access to additional seeds and materials, uh, that will be a a recurring thing is, is to make sure that you're not uh, cooking your, your alcohol. The fishery automatically has a prepare raw fish. I believe that's one of the generic uh, work order things, the like labor orders, the standing orders. Um, automatically clean fish, right? So I don't really need to queue this one up on a work order. The uh, fisher dwarf is just going to be doing it regularly and producing tons of fish bones for us to maybe make into arts. So that's another thing that we could do. Is one the possible lowest possible elevation? No. It goes lower than one. I'm down to negative 35 here. And then up to 62. It kind of depends. It depends where the magma is. Think like if you know oxygen is not included. There is sort of like a functional depth. Same with Minecraft, right? Where you can only go down so far and then it's like, ooh, can't use anything below this point, even if it exists. So let's go ahead and do I have, I do have one door built and some thrones and tables. So I'm gonna stick a door here. And then I'm also going to, uh, dig a tiny little space here. Eventually what's going to happen is this is going to be its own room. Uh, but I don't want to dig out the room anytime soon because that's a waste of my labor. But I will dig a pathway to get from the dining room to the kitchen. Uh, and these aren't permanent locations, by the by. This is just where we're putting them for now. All right, We do have one pine bed so far and one pine barrel. All right, so now that we have a still, I'm going to brew drinks from plants. And I'm just going to say repeat. I could also put this into a bill to do it. Um, but early on, I'm going to be micromanaging my drinks and food to make sure that we don't starve. Uh, so that that's probably not important. Actually, no. Take that back. I don't have a second door yet. Uh, you, Metal Crafter, are currently working on it. The center block on Doug isn't to support the roof. It's actually so that I can make a very easy staircase later on. Uh, but I realized that if this is going to be a dormitorium, I don't really care about that. And you can always build it in anyway out of stone. So if you don't, if you forget to remove the centers, it's not, it doesn't matter. All right, so let's get some of the beds down too, and then I'm going to set it up as a dorm. Um, one important thing is when you're setting up beds, uh, keep building placement after placement allows you to set multiples. And if you don't care about the material, you can say use closest material. Because I have all my beds and doors of all the same material, materials aren't important. Otherwise, it would look like this, where you get to pick the material. So if you're um, 
trying to lay it out very, very nice, or you have a specific bed in mind, um, why you would have a specific bed is, like, sometimes your nobility will eventually go, I want a bed encrusted with platinum, and then you have to specify which bed you're installing. Uh, but early on, especially for new players, you can just throw things down. It doesn't really matter uh, what material it is. Or an artifact bed, exactly. Alright, do I have my third door? I do. I guess it's not done. Nope, that one's already designated. All right, so for furniture. Whoa, Mega Hoof, thank you again. Quite a lot of sub gifting. Uh, I am gonna lay out some tables. Uh, something that's important to note is um, your dwarves, it's one table to one chair ratio. So there's no like picnic table setups. Everybody wants their own table. They're very asocial for social beings, which is unfortunate, but that's just the way it is. And cheers. Um, some other things I'm gonna want pretty early on as well is uh, craft doors stuff so I can start making mugs. Right now we're digging out the trade area, which is fine. Uh, but what I'm gonna do next is prioritize, and maybe not all at four, is prioritize a crafts dwarf area so that I can start to make mugs to drink out of. Because that, that's, uh, that's a requirement that your dwarves are going to want to have fulfilled. They don't like drinking like this. It kind of sucks. I get it. And then, likewise, on the opposite side, we'll just have this building excavated at some point for some reason. I'll add something in later. We, we could also double them up into one area, but I like each individual zone to be its own sort of individual manufacturing region. Have I got a lot of experience with the F? No, I don't. I just learn fast. Learn fast and die hard. All right, over here, Trade Depot. Um, Let's make it fancy. Cinnabar. Do a Cinnabar Trade Depot, a bright red one. I like it. Alright, so we're, we're starting to see dwarves falling asleep uh, in the hallways here, which is fine. I haven't set up the dorm yet. But let's actually zone the dorms. So the dorm is a shared bedroom. And I'm just going to call this dorm. And then the dining hall is a shared eating space. Well, sometimes shared. I like to paint between the lines. It's not necessary, by the way. Uh, but you can also designate dining halls to specific people, and there's reasons to do that later on with nobility. So if you have like a baron or a count, they're going to be like, I want my own dining room. And it's like, fine, whatever. It doesn't need to be as this big, but they do need their own eventually. How can you see how much of various resources have? Uh, stocks. So if you go to stocks, man, I should stop ignoring these messages and just collapse them. If you go to stocks, you can see, oh, I've got um, these many rum and wine barrels and then an empty pine barrel. You know, or if I go to beds, I have four beds. If I go to body parts, I have a bunch of pond turtle shells that the Fisher Dwarf has been generating. Um, so these stocks is really useful and it's even more useful when you have a bookkeeper with an office. So a bookkeeper is someone in your in your colony which will keep track of the stocks and they do require an office to do it well. I think there's a little bit of a grace period when you have fewer than 20 dwarves in your colony. Uh, you get to some of the benefits of, of bookkeeping and managing and all that stuff without an office because, you know, you have a small upstart. Um, so it's understood that you wouldn't have an office at that point. But, uh, but yeah. We'll, we'll get to an office uh, later on. So this is going to be the craft dwarfs area. And... They're going to be instructed to make mugs and the like. Um, and then once I get a few more beds and barrels out of the carpenter, I'm going to start introducing additional bills, like making wooden bins 
um, making wheelbarrows, making rock pots and rock mechanisms and that kind of stuff. So workshop. Uh, what did I say? Crafts. So here's the crafts area. So craft dwarf. Uh, the difference between a stone worker and a craft dwarf. Craft dwarf is. I think the easiest way to think about it is scale. So the stone worker is like big stone objects. Like this isn't exactly true, but it's kind of true. It's large objects like furniture. Whereas the craft dwarfs are like um, trinkets and, and mugs and the like. And, and that's kind of the easy way to remember. It's not exactly true, but it's the quick and dirty way. The, uh, the stone worker here can make altars, armor stands, blocks, bookcases, mostly just furniture-y stuff. Um, yeah, pretty much all furniture-y stuff. Whereas the craft dwarf is, can also make stuff out of not rock too. How many dwarves do I estimate to have in middle late game? It really depends on what. There is no, there is no real answer to that. It really depends on the goal, your own personal goals. You 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 can have a population of ten and still be successful. Uh, you can have a population of three hundred and your CPU will catch fire, and you'll be successful. So there isn't like a hard answer there. I don't think. Uh, let's get a mechanic too. And then I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to say to the competent miner, my mason, I'm actually, I'll allow them to mine, but I'm going to take them off of forced mining duty so they can start to build and the like. Do I have mugs now? No, not yet. I do have 200 drinks though, so I'm going to uh, slow up on brewing from plants because I've got a lot, of, a lot of booze. Doing really good on booze. Oh, my asthma. All right, that brings me to another point. Um, refuse. So, food will rot, things will decay, corpses need moving. Uh, put your garbage outside is the easiest way to do it initially. So, the dump. I don't even have a general stockpile yet. I'll get to that soon. Workshops. Uh, we will do a mechanic. Boom, right there. All right, then the next thing I want to do is to set up a uh, storage. So down here, I am going to higher prioritize this stairwell. And then start to dig out a general storage area. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to replicate the storage area. I'm going to replicate the great hall uh, down below. And this is basically all of the general storage I'm going to allow, because if I need more space than this, I'm doing a really bad job managing my work area. Is the easy way to put it. Because if I need more room than that, um, I'm just shoving everything into one big heap and calling it organized, which is obviously not true. Why are you... Oh... That's a throw. Oh, yes, yes, I did do that. All right, let's set this up to sevens. I misclicked. There we go. Now they go downstairs and start digging up the uh, the area. And once there's a little bit of area down here, I'll set it up a all stockpile. And I put that in quotes because it's not exactly true. I don't want everything stored there. Come on, there's just Wolverine brain. Get over it. Dump it. Alright, so this is the first stockpile, and I'll just drag it for now. So, instead of all, I'm going to call this overflow. And then I'm going to go to custom. What I don't want in here, and this is a beginner mistake, so if you're new to the game, listen up. Because if you don't do this, uh you can end up throwing out the things you don't mean to throw out. This is a very... Most of you veterans know what I'm talking about. If you have an all stockpile here, what ends up happening is all stockpiles allows for this stuff, like ammunition and armor and backpacks to be thrown out. Does that make sense to you? Doesn't to me. You don't want an all stockpile. Because if you make steel armor and you have an all stockpile... There's nothing stopping that armorsmith from going, all right, brand new armor, time to throw it in the trash. Yeah. Um, so no refuse, no corpses, 
and, and the same goes for your dump. But uh, and then the other things that I don't want in here, besides refuse and corpses, I'll, I'll custom tune it later on. But but that's a good start. Don't throw the trash in the stockpile, and don't throw your items as refuse. Because what what ends up happening is then it gets flagged as refuse, and and no corpses, so it's not nasty, and that's a good start. And then as I create custom tailored stockpiles for like carpentry and stoneworking and the like, I will remove those specifics from um, the general stockpile. So like if I want to store all my wood somewhere else, I would go in here and go, all right, it's time to not have wood in this stockpile because I have a better spot for it. And eventually what will happen is people will haul it uh, to where it belongs. So there's the overflow, and it will eventually be uh, whatever dimensions this is room. What is that? Uh, 7, 7, 14 plus 3 is 17, I think. What is this? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. Oh, it's a 19 room. Look at me, able to count. All right, Mason, I'm actually going to take... Actually, uh, Expedition Leader, I'm going to take off of mining. So that the Expedition Leader can start doing other things. And here is a little indicator of the shale tables have been built. Um, do note, the way I set up the bill is as soon as I use them, I make more, so using all of the tables that you have made just makes the stoneworker make more tables. So just because you have it in stock doesn't necessarily mean you should use it. Uh, another thing is you don't need a bed per person because dwarves don't all sleep at the same time. They actually don't sleep very much at all. Uh, so for a population of seven, you could easily get away with three beds. So I'm only going to put four down. But three probably would have been fine. Do I... How's my wood going? I have about 80 pine logs. Alright, yeah. I don't need to go chopping more wood down yet. Uh, so let's queue up those bins that I was talking about. So wooden bin is a storage item. And that actually gets me to a different point. There is different storage items in the game. So bins, barrels... Like barrels and jugs for liquid, bins for bulk goods, bags for like seeds and, and plants and the like. And you're going to want all of these to be able to hold stuff. Otherwise, your, um, your stockpiles are going to be overflowing full of crap. Uh, so it's really, really important to have storage capacity for it. And in your stockpiles themselves, if you click this little barrel icon... You can say, all right, in this storage spot, I want you to use 20 barrels and 20 bins and let's say three wheelbarrows so that people can use wheelbarrows to haul more stuff than like one at a time or particularly heavy stuff. Um, and each stockpile can be done like that. Another uh, caveat that I should do or sh that I should say is um, I should start to set up a farm and seeds get a little weird when you put them in stockpiles in bags and barrels. So it's best to not hold your seeds that way. Um, but let's... Let's... You know, actually, I can't really... There was no arable land other than the overland. So yeah, I don't even need to worry about farming. Cool. I'll get around to it eventually. But we do have a dorm. We do have a dining room. We're making good food, fish. Uh, these workshops haven't been built yet, but that's because my builders are working on this stockpile, which is large. Sand is farmable? Yeah, it's uh, it, true. It is farmable. Um, I'm just trying to think of whether I want to spend the time. Maybe there isn't. So the layers are very, very thin. Uh, 
I guess elevation 41 would be okay to farm in, but elevation 42 is like surface pond elevation, as you can see. So yellow sand. Oh uh, yeah, maybe maybe I'll farm. I don't know. I'll think about it. Because I can also just farm in the cavern instead. So here's the mechanics workshop, and uh, I am going to make rock mechanics. So what a mechanic is, it's like levers and switch components, stuff like that, uh, which is useful for like drawbridges and the like. So levers and axles and blah, blah, blah. But um, levers are pretty much all that I'm going to be touching early on. And I don't need too many of them, but uh, I will want to make them. And... and and sort of the general rule of thumb is, like, if it can be made out of stone, make it out of stone. If it can not be made out of stone, make it out of wood. If it can't be made out of stone or wood, make it out of metal. In terms of resource scarcity. You're going to have way more stone than you're going to have wood, and you're going to have way more wood than you're going to have metal on most maps. That's not always true, because if you settle in a map tile with no trees, that won't be true. But for me, in this, like, conifer forest, stone, wood, metal. Those are definitely the tiers. And and, and and metal requires the most processing. More processing, obviously, than stone, which you just pick at and immediately get. And more processing than trees, which you just swipe at. Um, so if you can avoid using metal, do so. Um, so I'm not going to be making, like, iron or gold mechanisms. Right. I'm going to be making rock mechanisms. And, in fact, I'm going to specify uh, make shale mechanisms. Don't don't even use up my, my good... My good stone. Use up the shale stone. And then the craft door. Uh, that's another one. Let's make mugs. Make rock mug. And we'll make up to... Two, actually, let's do 20. So if I have less than 20 empty rock mugs, I make more. And then that will get, uh, because I do have a manager, there it is, it gets added. All right, what is everyone working on now? Woodworker has no job. Well, you shouldn't have said that. What? You have no job? Okay, you're just in the process of finding a new job. I have pine trees to be cut down. So as soon as this is uh, dug out, I'm going to have you guys maybe vote on next project? Well, no, I do need to get uh, some basics done. But, uh, but I'll have you vote anyway. What to build next? A mini farm. Um, a temple. Or work on the drawbridge. If you guys pick, you decide. Roy, Orange Chaos, thank you for the resubs and winter sleep as well. Cheers. All right, food, water, or food, drink, seeds, that's all good. Fish, all good. The Cinnabar Trade Depot is getting made. It's a very fanciful deep red. And there it is. Uh, for trade, periodically you will be visited by traders. And you can, when they're there, it's easier to show when they're here, but you can decide to put certain items into the Trade Depot for you to be able to trade. And then you can request anyone at the Trade Depot or your broker. Ideally, your broker would be the person to get the best price. Uh, because the better your broker is, the cheaper the costs are. Uh, one big reminder for new players. Remember to turn this off when they're done. Or your person that is... If, if you have your broker at the Depot, they'll stand there until they basically go insane. Because you told them to. Also at the Craft Dwarfs, uh, as soon as I get the shell mugs made, uh, what I'm going to do with the Fisher Dwarfs shells is make large shell gems. 
just so that I can sell a bunch of like garbage kitsch gems to the trader because they're stupid and will buy anything from you. You're having issues how to set up work orders. Can I explain it to a simpleton like you? Sure. Uh, as soon as I have a new work order to set up, I will walk through it even slower. Like, uh, like gems or maybe oh, actually I have, let's make rock jugs because yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm going to wait for the rock jugs cause I, I want some more mugs first. Cause if I add rock jugs, then I'm juggle between making jugs and mugs and you drink out of mugs. People don't like to be unhappy. In fact, I do have one person who's unhappy, so let's figure out why. The un per unhappy person is Shem, and Shem is unhappy because they were annoyed to have to drink without a goblet, cup, or mug. Hey, this is exactly what I was saying. It's really important to have mugs. And their personality is uh, a fact as well. So, for instance... Shem has an ability to read emotions very well, but has a little willpower and lousy intuition. Uh, he likes slate, pig iron, pineapple, opal, uh, the color lilac, and low boots. When possible, he prefers to consume dwarven beer. Absolutely detests slugs. Um, you can also see his needs. So things that will make him happier, things that will not make him happy, and then... You know, uh, some of the personal traits. You don't usually have to dig into here uh, because dwarves are somewhat a dime a dozen, one dies, ten new ones show up to your doorstep. So it's not that big of a deal. Uh, but if we did want to specifically hone in on Shem, it seems at the moment um, he slept on a rough cave floor, but that's because I didn't have uh, beds at the time. He was annoyed by the lack of chairs, but I didn't have the dorm set up or the uh, dining hall set up. And then he was annoyed to have to drink without a mug. And that's just because I didn't have mugs made. And his mood will change because I'm addressing all of those things. Those are just new colony, uh, new, new fortress complaints. Nice. The overflow stockpile is almost done. And then as soon as this is done, or maybe now is an appropriate time, I I'm going to break down the wagon. So that all the materials in the wagon, all the food, all the all the stuff is brought down to the stockpile. Um, because it is about time. And I am going to set up some additional zones here. Also, keep in mind that like most of the work that is going on here is going to be moved at some point. Looks like a simple farm. Set up a simple farm. Thank you for voting. All right, so the way to do this is I'm gonna use the main stairwell that I already have established in the Great Hall. And I'm gonna go hit a lower priority, so let's make this two. Oh, actually, I've already terminated the stairwell here. Uh, it's hard to tell because the cinnabar is there, but this stairwell has terminated, so it might actually be easier to set up this stairwell elsewhere. Uh, the really important part, I would say, is to make sure that... Um, okay, I'm going to step back a second. This is going to be a little confusing, but I'll explain. Eventually... Eventually, I'm not saying now or even soon, but eventually it might be reasonable to create like a dry moat. I'm going to be erasing all of this, by the way, a dry moat around our entryway so that uh, my pastured animals can roam freely eating crops that grow under the sun and that I can farm on the surface. The seeds that you farm underground are different than the seeds you farm on the surface, Um the seeds that you start with are underground seeds, and those seeds often can be used to brew beers or alcohols, but um, farming on the, on the surface can be very advantageous. It's just more difficult to do because you have to protect it from invaders. So one thing that you can do is you can build a perimeter sort of moat, a dry moat or a moat full of lava 
typically is better than a water moat because there's a lot of enemies that can swim. And then it can't be one wide because a lot of enemies can bridge that gap. Uh, and then it has to be at least two deep because a lot of enemies can climb a one uh, a one step um, height. And I would say, for the most part, too wide, too deep, and not filled with liquid is going to filter out most of your problems. Um, there are some exceptions to that, like if they show up with crossbows or something, you know, then that's a whole different problem. Um, the reason I mention this is if I want that moat channel, uh, we, you can also do it in walls as well. And then, it, and instead of building like a pit, you would just build walls. And then after you have the walls built, you would just build a moat right around where the bridge is. And that's a little bit easier, especially in my case. The reason I mention this, and let me delete this. The reason I mention this is um, if I'm building a farm, I'm going to want the farm not to be where the brook is because that's going to be a big problem. And then if I do end up digging a moat, the sand level that I would farm at is level 41, but the surface is level 43. So if I build a farm where I'm eventually going to make a moat, it's going to be a problem. I'm going to have to fill the farm and relocate it. Um, so in my case, if I tunnel up from like this spot, I can build a farm here. It's across the river and I'm never going to include it in a moat. And that way it's never really going to be a future problem for me because enemies won't tunnel or anything like that. So this staircase is probably the best one to build a farm rather than this staircase, which leads actually the staircase isn't bad. It's on the other side too. But my point is I wouldn't want to build a farm up from this spot because it's like going to be flooded by the brook or, it, you know, it's going to run into some problems. So let's uh, let's go ahead and plan that. And you know what I'll do? Let's see if I can't build a farm right above my still. I don't think this is going to be the permanent spot for the still. But that will work. It's actually kind of under a hill, too. As you can see, we're just up tunneling the multiple levels and it's here it is yellow sand there is no direction I mean the water is close as you can see but I should be fine so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put my farming seeds in this spot so that we have the seeds stored and then make many little farms you don't get a lot of seeds and you don't need large farms, especially early on. So it's just a little stockpile for seeds and uh, and three by three farms. Very simple. All right, so this stockpile, I'll name farming seeds. Go to food, seeds, and it's not even all seeds um, because, it, you know, we're going to be farming cave wheat. God, I don't have all them memorized. So one of those like uh, dimple cups. I'm probably missing them. There's like six of them, right? Uh, plump helmets. Here, I can just check my own stocks. This is how to do it when you don't have a nice psychopedic memory. Go to seeds, pigtail, dimple, plump helmets, sweet pod, and rock nuts. Okay. Come on, seeds. Rock nuts. Sweet pods. And what was the last one I forgot already? Holy cow. Short memory. Pigtail. How did I forget that? That's the cloth seed. Oh, 
Okay. So this farming seeds is also going to say don't use any barrels, bins, wheelbarrows, none of that stuff. Just put the seeds straight there. All right. Uh, down to the stockpile here, this uh, overflow stockpile. Uh, likewise, I'm going to want to remove those seeds from this so that the seeds are stored where I want them so stored. So rock nut. And this is very typical with how uh, how the amount of micromanagement that you have to do. Why was pigtails already not included here? Sweet pod. Dimple. Cave wheat. Did I get them all? I think I already did. Oops. Plump helmet. Okay. Good enough. If I notice any seeds inappropriately stored here, I'll fix it. Uh, barrels, let's say 60 and 60. Barrels and bins. I'll probably have to recorrect that now that I just changed it. This is just an arbitrary number. I just don't want the whole thing filled up with barrels and bins. Uh, yeah. That also, um, reminds me. So that work build that you wanted me to show you, uh, I'm at a point where it would be good for me to make wheelbarrows. So let's go over the work orders again. So up here, this button, this button down here opens the work orders, or hotkey O for order. And then up in the top right, you add a new work order. Then you pick whatever work order that you want to add. So in my case, I would just search for wheelbarrow. Make sure that I'm making a wooden wheelbarrow, because I don't have any of the metals to be able to make metal ones. And here is the make wooden wheelbarrow. And, and without doing anything else, what ends up happening is I'll make 10 and then I'll never do it again. It will erase from this work order, which is fine. You can totally do it that way. In fact, if I wanted to make easy meals, that would be a pretty appropriate way to do it. Where, you know, I could do prepare easy meal, do it 999 times, and I wouldn't have to queue it up again. And every day it would try to make more meals. And it would be a constant reminder of, hey, make more meals, make more meals. That's pretty straightforward. But if you wanted to go a little bit more complex to make sure that you always have 10 available wheelbarrows, you click this green icon over here. And these are conditions that must be met in order for the work order to work. So the condition of the amount of empty wheelbarrows I have is less than 10. Basically, I've run out of empty wheelbarrows. It will queue up to make more. And then this says if it satisfies for next check or not. So because I don't have 10 wheelbarrows free, it is satisfied for the next check. And then the other condition that I'm going to add here is the amount of logs. I'm only going to make wheelbarrows when I have greater than 10 logs. The reason to do this one is a little complicated, but basically you don't want to run out of a specific resource. Uh, the primary reason why is fey moods. So every now and then your dwarves will get an inspiration, like a crafting inspiration. And you will have to supply them certain materials in order to fulfill their inspiration. You don't get to pick what it is um, at all. So it might just be like a fisher dwarf goes, I'm going to make something on the stone cutter. And he takes over the stone cutter, um, the stone cu one of your stone cutters, uh, and, and goes, all right, now provide me like, you know, two cut gems and four stones and a piece of wood. And if you don't do that, He'll go insane and die. Yes. So you don't want to use up all of your material because in a fey mood, if you make sure if you don't add these conditions to be like, hey, at least leave 10 logs, at least leave 10 gems, at least leave 10 whatever, uh, you can end up in a situation where you get a fey mood and it's like, uh oh, I used up my everything. And your dwarf, it gives you a bit of time. It gives you like a season or so until they go insane and die. But if you don't supply them their materials, they go insane and die. And I'll, I'll demonstrate uh, what that's like, the first fame mood I have. But that's one of the big reasons to leave those conditions or just the fact that like you might need something in an emergency. So it's like, uh-oh, I need a rock mechanism to repair a lever so I can pull the drawbridge up. And if you don't leave a little bit of wiggle room, um, you, you die. 
<laughs> uh, so w what do you want me to build next now that I'm, um, I'm actually not done with the farm. I've just dug it out. But let me hotkey this. So we'll call this farm. and put it on three. And I'm going to constantly forget to check in on the farm because that's what I do. But uh, go to workshops, go to farming, and farm plot. And I'll, I'll get some of the uh, base seeds up soon. But uh, what to build next? I could build a work on the drawbridge. I could work on the uh, mining shaft, a temple. Um, a tavern. Offices. Or other viewer suggestions. So, you guys vote. It's partially covering my face, which is probably for the best. Right. I'm probably pretty close on the amount of shell mugs that I have. So I'm going to add another... I'm going to add a repeating work order here. I'm going to make large shell gems, and I'm going to make 999 of them. So what's happening here is my fisher is fishing up pond turtles, and as you can see, I have a bajillion pond turtle shells. And one thing that I can do with all these pond turtle shells is turn them into, like, trinkets and gems so I can sell them and sell them to other factions to buy things that I need. Um, I'll get into purchasing later on, but... Um, this allows someone at the Craftsdorf station to just make a bunch of gems for sale, which is going to be really nice. So wheelbarrow, bins, barrels. Um, yeah, I'm not going to work on the jugs yet because I just told the Craftsdorf to make a bunch of gems. So he's going to be busy with that. Do I have anyone that's a gem cutter? I don't think I do. Let me, let me check. So here's one of the ways to check. It's not, definitely not the only way. But add new work detail. Go to gem cutting. Done. Call it a gem cutter. Oh, I do have a gem cutter. Oh, yes. So now I, I have a custom work. And this custom work is just gem cutting. Right? And then... These are the people that are good gem cutters. So Zephin here is a competent gem cutter. Because uh, another thing that you end up a lot of is you have these gems. Like this is an onyx. These are Morians. These are adventurines. And you can cut those into gems and sell them as well. Gems will definitely sell better on average than like carved up pond turtle shells. The, the carved up pond turtle shells is just an easy way to get rid of what otherwise would be trash and turn them into something you can sell. Whereas the gems, if you have a competent gem cutter, can actually make you a lot of money. Keep in mind, however, uh, making a lot of money all of a sudden attracts a lot of un potentially unwanted attention. I.e., it's good to be able to defend yourself before you start cutting loads and loads of gems and smelting gold and, and silver and platinum and flexing wealth because that flexed wealth is going to get your butt kicked. I still don't have the farm plots. You can also mint money. Yeah, that, that's true, too. But initially, uh, large, round pond turtle shell gems are all the craze back in Dwarf Fortress headquarters. How are we doing up here? We still have trees queued to be cut. Uh, my logs are fine. So the wagging got broken down to the sand pair wood logs, but I still have plenty of pine. If I wanted more wood, what I could do is I could go to woodcutters and tell the woodcutter to only do woodcutter tasks, but that's not necessary.
Will the trader give me money if the value is uneven in the trade? Uh, no. They pocket the uh, the difference. And here is how to see your wealth. If you have a um, if you have someone in the in the bookkeeper, I think it's bookkeeper, right? Yeah, I believe it's no, it's bookkeeper. Roll. Um, you have a calculated wealth at the top left if you mouse over it. So I've not made any weapons or armor, so our wealth is zero there. Furniture is about a thousand. Other objects about two thousand. Architecture is about a thousand. Uh, and imported wealth is what I showed up on the wagon. Uh, speaking of which, it wouldn't be a terrible idea to smooth out... Ooh, maybe not as a two. Eh, no, as a two. Smooth out the dorm and smooth out the dining room so that they become prettier, uh, prettier rooms and people will be happier using them. Dwarves are mostly brought in by immigration, but um, you can have babies, but children aren't good at stuff. <laughs> How comprehensive do defensive mechanics? Uh, quite, quite complicated and comprehensive. So we're going to build a drawbridge next. So initially, I'm only going to build the entrance drawbridge as that's the most important. Uh, but let's... I'm, I'm going to finish the farm plot first because that is an outstanding task that uh, that needs doing. And then we'll get the drawbridge. We should be pretty close to fulfilling. Like, I only need one more table, one more throne, three more beds, four more doors. So we're, we're almost... We're almost done with the initial sort of do until you have X uh, queued up. Except for the wheelbarrows. We only have uh, one out of the ten wheelbarrows. So that that requires a little bit more work. Jordan, thank you for the resub. 39 months. Oh my god. Cheers. Thank you for tuning in to Dwarf Fortress Taming the Wilds, which originally streamed live on Twitch December 27th. If you have any feedback or questions for me, let me know in the comments below. But please keep in mind that I'm a relatively new player, and I'd like to learn at my own pace. If you'd like to join a live stream of mine, Rodamont.com has a link to Twitch, as well as my stream schedule. If you'd like to join my gaming community, Rodamont.com also has a link to Discord, as does the description of this video. Thank you so very much for watching. A special thank you to my Patreon patrons, Twitch subscribers, and viewers like you that support the channel and made it all the way to the credits. Farewell, my fellow dwarves.